There are thousands of DOS games. Most of them are terrible. I play one selected at random with a 20 minute time limit and record it live. This is the result. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another random DOS game show. And this time, it's the Cycles International Grand Prix Racing. Hey, Grand Prix Racing? Well, wasn't that a game in its own right? DSI, Distinctive Software. Well, we know them, don't we? We know who Distinctive Software are. They're the people behind stunts. So, uh, I'm gonna set a timer and we're, we're gonna get going. Choose game type. So we've got practice, um, single race, championship circuit, and we can enter our name. Our name is Lonnie, but we'll uh, type that right. Let's just do a quick practice. Oh, look at the guy bring the bike out. So we can uh, we can sort out specifications and stuff here. That's pretty cool. And of course, the music is excellent. Ah, right. The uh, it's CC. So we'll go with a nice low CC engine. Uh, we, we'll just we'll just fly along. Choose your track, England. Okay, prepare to ride. Okay, so it's controlled by the arrow keys. Nice and simple. You are oddly enough for a bike game. This is first person perspective. Ah, whoa, that turn. Now, th those on the channel who have already seen me play racing games know Lonnie, good on the streets, bad at cornering. So, there was a there was a Grand Prix game, also published by Accolade, I believe, called uh, Grand Prix Circuit. Uh, might have been designed or published by Accolade, or I think I think Distinctive Software may have been involved there as well, um, and. It was considered one of the uh, great early Grand Prix games. Basically, with Grand Prix games, there's pre-Jeff Grammond and post-Jeff Grammond. He, he was that influential in terms of Grand Prix. But this, this now, oh, this is like Grand Prix circuit, but you're on a motorbike. And the gameplay is excellent. Absolutely excellent, and I don't know why I'm sounding surprised. I shouldn't be really, because it's distinctive software, they knew what they were doing, and I will always, always go to bat for distinctive software. You might know them nowadays as EA Canada. Yeah, they became EA Canada. There's the finish line. Let's cross. Ah, oh, that was good practice. Oh, that's nice. It allows you to just uh, see if you can best your previous lap. Oh, I've missed that corner again. But let's exit out of that. So, overall statistics for Donington Park. There we are. Best lap was lap number one because it was the only lap we did. All right, so the next mode we've got is single race. And, uh, Let's up the specification, shall we? Let's go for 500cc this time. And we'll see what it's like racing against some of our people. Let's also go to Donington one more time. Now, is this the qualifier? Oh, you know, this already feels different. Um, the, the bigger engine means they have, everything is a lot faster. So, if you're just starting off, You'll want to play with the, the, the smaller engine. Because, uh, yeah, this, this requires a degree of skill. A degree of skill that I currently lack. But I'm doing okay, actually. It's very intuitive. There's not much to it. You control things with the arrow keys. Gear shifts seem to be automatic. And, uh... The track is very well sort of painted out for you. You know where you're going, you know what you're doing. It's got that distinctive uh, design, yes, pun intended, where the draw distance isn't horrific. You can see what's ahead of you, but there's also not too much um, graphically to distract you. 
it's very much a pure sort of motorbike racing game. I played another motorbike racing game recently and I should have realized at the time it was basically marble madness but with motorbikes you know it wasn't uh, it wasn't an attempt at a simulation at all and uh, that was a poor corner for the finish there all right. end of qualifying so where does that put us I thought that was a qualifier last <laughs> but you know what even with that poor corner you can see 125.8 isn't far off the pack. Joe Campbell there only got 124.5. So that means these boys shouldn't be too hard to race against. Right. The problem is you don't want to play bumper cars when you're on a motorcycle. You know, you, you, you can turn invincibility mode on in, you know, Grand Prix games or whatever and just go bumper cars there, but uh, if you run into somebody here, I suspect you'll both go flying. And of course, we will test that theory, much to the dismay of the Donington crowd. Oh, if I can catch them, the, uh, the AI knows what it's doing, you know. I noticed this in uh, the, the DOS version of Need for Speed. But uh, the AI was actually quite good, and it took a, a good bit of effort on your part to actually catch them. But on the straights, I should be faster than Joe Campbell here. Goodbye, Joe. And there we go, up into the next position. We haven't rammed anyone. Oh, corner, 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 corner. Might lose a bit of time on that, but no. They're a bit more cautious with the overtakes, because one overtake going wrong spells disaster. There's that corner that I lost time on. And I'm in first place. That that was actually surprising to me. Right, there's a corner coming up. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm on the grass. That's not good. And in true racing game style, the grass does slow you down. But, yeah, I'm enjoying myself. More than I thought I would, because I'm... Despite where I come from, which is Northern Ireland, for those who don't know, um, I'm, I'm from the very north of Northern Ireland, and we have what's called the Northwest 200 here. And we, as a result, have a very, very big motorbike-based culture. It's not a bad thing. And, uh, yeah, I, I just never got into it. I have seen my fair share of motorbikes, motorbike racing, motorbike riders in my time. But it's, it's not my thing. But despite it not being my thing, unlike, say, Grand Prix, um, I'm really enjoying myself because the mechanics of this, this sort of twitch handling, which isn't too twitchy, by the way, of the bike with the arrow keys, is both simple and kind of complicated in its own way. Because you've just got to learn how to drift around corners appropriately, and uh, a lot of this is muscle memory from the stunts days. I said in my need... Oh, I forgot about that corner. Why did I forget about that corner? Too busy talking. Yes, um, from my uh, Need for Speed review, I said, you know, sometimes it'll take me an hour or two to sort of, you know, figure out the, the handling of... Uh, the racer, the game in itself, the physics, the drift, and so on. Um, with this, it's not the case, because I've played distinctive software games before. I know how they uh, work. Speaking of which, uh, a number of fellas from distinctive software, you're probably wondering, James, why do you keep bringing up Need for Speed? But I mentioned this in the Need for Speed video. Uh, some of the fellas from distinctive software went on to make the Need for Speed series. So what you're looking at here is essentially them cutting their teeth and learning. And you'll see there, there there was a driver who crashed and was lying on the ground, not moving. I hope he's okay. I think we saw one earlier as well. I think two of them crashed out. And uh, we didn't test the whole ramming thing. Hey! No! Just at the last, I was pipped to the post. 
So there we are. Lonnie, second place. Ah, frustration. I was too busy chatting. I slowed down a bit and Norman Green took my place. That was rightfully mine. Poor old Joe Campbell and Andy Buck. Yeah, the two bodies. Congratulations. You have set the best lap time. The previous record was no time at all. <laughs> so it keeps track based on engine size, 500cc there, uh, Donington. So we could do a championship circuit, which presumably would be all the races, and then you'd accrue points over time. But what we'll do is we'll go single race, and we will move up. We're shifting it up a gear. Or not. Maybe it only has 500cc. Oh no, we, we, we were at 500, I think. All right. Yes, we were, we were doing the hardest, the fastest. Uh, let's go to Japan and see if it's different. Yep, this is looking Japanese. Yep, very Japanese looking to me. Don't know about you. Hey, there's a pit lane. So you can get repairs and stuff, maybe. That's cool. And uh, these sort of late 80s games, uh, this was before CD-ROM really became a thing. That would sort of come into play in the sort of early 90s mass marketing of CD-ROM games. And as a result, these games came on floppy disks. And the problem with the floppy disk, of course, is that the max storage of a floppy disk that generally got distributed around that time was 1.44 megabytes. And you had to fit in um, an entire game into two or three floppy disks. Famously, Doom, came, uh, the shareware version of Doom came on two. Imagine playing Doom that way. But anyway, what I'm aiming at here is that you can see that the uh, the texture mapping for the roads, the grass, and everything is more or less identical. The only thing that's changed is the layout. So you're thinking, right, exotic locales, Japan. But almost nothing has changed. What has changed, I believe, I might be wrong about this because I haven't had a good look at it, is the backdrop. The backdrop has changed significantly. At least I think it has. Oh, nice little slaloming. Another thing I need to point out as I finish this qualification lap is that there's slopes. I haven't seen slopes in a game of this age before. And as you can see, another terrible qualification time from Lonnie. And we'll just do a quick race, and I think we'll call it after that, because we've seen... Oh, some some bumping there. Yeah, we can play bumper cars. We don't have to worry so much. I've already proven I can do this, guys, you know. Let's take a few people off the road. Come on. Off, off with you. Eh. No. Huh. Hey, he bumped me. It's getting personal. And obviously, there are limitations at the time. Like the engine is being rendered by the PC speaker. Which, if you're watching, might get annoying after a while. <laughs> There's no music. And... Uh, yeah, all the drivers look the same. Hey, there we go! Ha ha ha! Yes! Yes! Disaster! Toad to pit. Did not finish. But we took that Ian Smith down a peg. That's what you get, Ian! Okay, granted it was Norman Green that took the position, but we took out our vengeance on poor old Ian Smith. And that, ladies and gentlemen, it's tempting, it's really tempting to just let this run for 20. 
because it's really good and I'm really enjoying it. So, with five minutes left to go, this is me saying I could cut this short at 15, having showed you stuff, but I am going to play the Championship Circuit for five minutes because this game deserves the 20. It deserves it. Maybe I'm biased, but uh, let's... Hey, look, F1, F2, you have load and save options, which is very, very reasonable. And you can see here the actual age of the game, because you've got Yugoslavia, West Germany, and uh, Czechoslovakia. I believe it's Czechoslovakia. Uh, it would have rep after it if it was the Czech Republic. So obviously you have to do them in order. So enter to continue. We've already had the Japan circuit, but we didn't have like, uh, you know, uh, a proper attempt at it. We were just messing around. There do appear to be some times there, which is interesting. So we know what we're doing now. Let's go for some qualification. And then I'll do a little bit of racing, the timer will go off, and I will heartily recommend this game. It's, it's just a case of whether you can get past the, uh, the sound and the primitive graphics. You know, if you're a fan of those early 80s, or sorry, early late 80s racer games, if you know what I mean. Um, then yeah, this this is an absolute no-brainer, you know. I mean, it it's it's really made me excited for the Grand Prix version of this because I know uh, there's there's a Grand Prix version that was very highly regarded by the same people using the same engine, I believe. So uh, eventually I'll run into that and I'm, I'll probably play that for 20 minutes as well. And this is just me being chill and oh, missing a corner terribly. Oh, that's the worst one. That's what I get for being chill. But you know what? The game is very forgiving. Some racers, you go off. Like, uh, take Def Rally as an example. You know, you, you go off a track in Def Rally. And that's pretty much it. You're screwed, you know. This, it almost felt like it was guiding me back. Which is nice, you know. It, uh, it almost encourages you and says, oh, don't worry, sure, you had a bit of a mistake, but it's, it's no biggie, you know. I'm actually getting nostalgia. I haven't talked about it much, but I'm getting nostalgia for stunts, I have to say. Just playing this. End of qualifying. It wasn't a great time. I'll be last. And then we'll just, uh, oh! I stand corrected. I'm getting better. Look at that. Eighth. Prepare to race. Okay, so we have to be a little more careful this time. And not um, run into our fellow man as much. Because as you saw, there are... I wouldn't call them spectacular crashes, but... Crashes exist. Don't know what that accent was. Right, there's a corner. Let's just carefully... Negotiate this. Hey! Whoa! We'll get them in the straights. Right now, it's it's corner corner heavy, corner centric. We'll just uh, make our way over here and bide our time. In the words of the great Corey Taylor, biding our time until the time is right. If you don't like heavy music, do not look up that lyric. He basically goes nuts in the middle of the song. There's this quiet bit where he says, Biding my time until the time is right. I think it's a song called Scissors by Slipknot. It's from way back in 99. Good stuff. If you like noise like I do. I'm not racing particularly well, I have to say. Hey! Oh, no! So, you get a number of bumps. You get a number of bumps. And if you exceed that number, you go flying off your bike. And it's the end of a race for you. 
So Lonnie didn't finish because of that dastardly Don Lee. And uh, we can escape out of this now. And I will briefly sum this game up. What is it? Somebody took the Grand Prix racing engine that had already been developed and said, hey, let's make one for motorbikes. And I love the difficulty level selection. I'm on beginner, so there's a real difficulty curve here. There's championship modes. You can practice any race. You can do a single race on any race to check your times. Um, you know, it, it's just, it's got everything you need from a racer. It really does. And there goes the timer, and rightly so. Rightly so, you know. I, I was not expecting. I was expecting maybe I'll go 10, 15 minutes, you know, and say, hey, check out their later games. But this is legitimately good. It's legitimately good. And all fans of racing games, even if you don't like motorbikes, if you like that late 80s aesthetic, the graphics, the, uh, the course, sort of the way it looked there, then yes, this is fun and it is for you, definitely. Hearty recommendation, big thumbs up. I think it might just fall short of my top 25, but hopefully this video will stand in its stead. It's rem it reminds me a little of IndyCar Racing. This is going to be a strange one for you. But IndyCar Racing was like NASCAR Racing, and it was almost as good, but it missed out on the top 25. I felt like with this one, I know it's probably not going to hit my top 25, but it needed a 20 minute video, so it gets one. Excellent work from Distinctive Software, yet again, great racer, well worth your time. And if you like me waffling on about racing games, I do it every so often, even though I'm not particularly good at them. Feel free to check out my channel for loads of other genres, hundreds of other videos, and if you like what you see there, hit that old subscribe button. Ah, that was a really, really enjoyable time for me. Until next time.